Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is produce, organic versus conventional. How to remove pesticides off of conventional produce. So this is an article from Collective Evolution, March 29th, 2016. And it's talking about pesticides on your produce and how to get rid of them and some of the um, effects, side effects, lack of nutrients on conventional produce. It's a really good article. What's the difference between organically grown produce and non-organically grown produce? Well, according to the USDA, the Department of Agriculture, organic farms and processors must not use genetically modified ingredients. This means that organic farmers can't plant GMO seeds, an organic cow cannot eat GMO feed, an organic soup producer can't use GMO ingredients, and so on. Farmers and processors must show that they aren't using GMOs and they are protecting their products from contact with prohibited substances from farm to table. In order for something to qualify as organic, it must also be free from synthetic materials like pesticides and antibiotics. Conventional foods obviously has none of these restrictions. Food grown in this way can be genetically modified, sprayed with pesticides and injected with all sorts of things, antibiotics, whatever. So, and then it lists a couple of reference studies on how important it is to eat organically and the pesticide residues in your body versus people who don't and weaning yourself off and how quick it takes. Um, that's really, really inspiring. People think that what they put in their mouth really doesn't affect them. And of course, there are no long-term studies to say, well, this pesticide is bad. We know certain things are bad like DDT. Um, but there's really no long-term studies that are coming out and saying this is terrible for you. And that's for the fact of the matter of that it just takes humans so long to to uh, for generation to generation as opposed to rats and opposed to other lab animals such as rats but there's plenty of studies out there about gmo foods in lab rats and pesticides and all that in lab animals but what to do what this really article is talking about what to do if the pesticides are on your produce already so here is what they recommend how to remove pesticides from non-organically grown produce children today are sicker than they were a generation ago from childhood cancers to autism, birth defects, and asthma, a wide range of diseases and disorders are on the rise. Our assessment of the latest science leaves little room for doubt. Pesticides are one of the key drivers of this sobering trend. And that is from 2012 report by Pesticide Network North America, PANA. And I gotta tell you, I had asthma. I had asthma my whole life until I was 28 years old, 29 years old. Jamie, you had asthma. I sure did. Until a few years ago. Um, we had, I had terrible allergies growing up. Um, I still do have seasonal allergies here and there, but not nearly like I did, like I once did. And, you know, I switched at 28, 29 years old. I switched my diet. This was almost 15, 16 years ago when our daughter was born. Jamie and I made a huge commitment that we've screwed our own self up so much that we didn't want to screw our children up. So when Jamie was pregnant with Courtney, we said now is the best time for us to change. We're now bringing a, a child into the world and uh, we just don't want to repeat the same things. We don't want them to be addicted to medication on all this stuff, ADD, whatever it was. I mean, I was on a list of medication, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, chronic fatigue. Um, I was on prescription deodorant. Um, they wanted to put me on cholesterol meds and that was when the last straw was. I said, no, 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 I'm not taking that. I'm gonna take a stand for my health. And all this happened at the same time that Jamie was pregnant with Courtney. So we started our, our own health revolution and education back then. And we switched to a lot of our food to organic. And thus that's why we really promote organic food at our restaurant. We are just um, really committed to eating and living by organic. Not everything's organic, but we try to make the best choices as possible. We try to balance economics. We try to make sure we stick to the dirty dozen list that's always put out, which is a great list of foods that should always be organic versus foods that, that don't really get sprayed with pesticides and other things. And of course, 
an organic certification is not the only thing you're looking for. You're looking for real food that's produced, hopefully on a local level. When you go to a farmer's market, you're not gonna see organic certifications attached to a lot of the produce grown there, but you can have a conversation with the farmers and understand this is real food, and that they're not spraying funky stuff on their farm because most of these farmers live on their land and they don't want to pollute their own living habitat. They refuse to do that because they're not stupid. So, what if you do buy conventional produce? Now, this really this is a recipe for for a wash, a produce wash, and I would say use this whether it's organic or not organic, just to wash whatever off. So, and here's what they also say the same thing: whether your food is organically grown or not, it's still a good idea to wash your produce before you eat it. We stumbled upon some great advice at FitLife.tv on how to do this effectively. So, FitLife TV is where it's sourced from. Our technique is to use a homemade produce spray, which Sasha Brown describes below. Simply mix together a tablespoon of lemon juice, a cup of water, and two tablespoons of baking soda. Mix them all well until the baking soda has completely dissolved. Put the mixture into a spray bottle, spray it onto the fruits or vegetables you'd like to, uh, that, that you'd like to. Leave it there for five to 10 minutes and then rinse it off. Now, baking soda. Baking soda is a very powerful substance. We use it extensively to clean. You can make a baking soda paste and really clean down grease. You can take a dirty wall and, and get it white again. It is amazing what baking soda will do. And of course, consuming baking soda is also extremely beneficial. So if you're leaving any of this on your produce and you're worried about it, baking soda is totally safe to consume. I have several videos on that on my YouTube channel about consuming it safely, recommended dosages, what it's good for. There's doctors that really recommend it, the alkaline, um, alkaline theory, some of the authors recommend it in, in, that, uh, in that diet paradigm. So, you can also use vinegar and water. Filling the, the sink, a clean sink, with four parts of water and one part vinegar, you will keep the produce in here for up to an hour. You can simply rinse it off and eat it immediately or store it for further use. Now, whether you use a sink or some type of a, a vessel, whether it's a pot, you can use a pot, you can use a big pan, you can use a big um, stainless steel bowl. The size you can buy stainless steel bowls now, even Walmart and Sam's Club, I understand, are these huge stainless steel bowls. You can use those if you don't want to fill your sink up. I knew a lady years ago that used to wash all of her produce in her bathtub, used to fill it all, fill the bathtub up, or had a bathtub that was specifically used for that. And she was uh, prescribing by the, I believe, Helda Clark uh, cancer th uh, theory, and she was actually bleaching her food with a little bit of Clorox, a very, very small amount of Clorox uh, to kill any other types of microbial growth, uh, molds, things like that. Uh, that was also an interesting thing to do. And there, if you go to Helda Clark's book, I believe she describes that much more in depth there. Just don't go throw bleach and water into a bathtub and throw your potatoes in there because I'm saying it here. Understand, understand how that's done fully, do some research. So here are two more recipes for produce washes. 20 drops of grapefruit seed extract available at a health food store. One tablespoon of baking soda. One cup of white vinegar. Uh, one cup of water and a brand new spray bottle. So that's one recipe. Here's the second recipe, a bit simpler, only three ingredients. One tablespoon of lemon juice, one tablespoon of white vinegar, one cup of water. Brown also mentions a couple of store-bought choices of which one is certified kosher, uh, made with natural ingredients called Environine, fruit and vegetable wash. And another is Bio, BioClean, which contains lime peel and garlic, garlic, grapefruit seed extracts. So there's a theme in all this. There's a theme of vinegar, some type of high acid. There's a theme of uh, uh, high acid. Uh, baking soda, which is very high alkaline, very good for you. And then there's also some citrus. So those are the three common, and of course water, those are the four common ingredients in here. So if you didn't even know a recipe, by just doing a four to one ratio, it looks like of vinegar to water and maybe throwing in some lemon juice, throwing in a spoon of, of baking soda, um, or some 
even essential oils of lemon, even squeezing some lemon or some lime or some grapefruit in there, uh, the essential oils of that or some extract would do the job perfectly fine. Let your produce sit for five to 10 minutes, preferably. Now, just because you're buying, or I'm sorry, just because you're washing conventionally grown, grown produce, still don't avoid organic produce. Whenever you can afford it, whenever you can eat it, whenever you can purchase it, consume it, whatever, take that opportunity and do so. Because what that, in, what that entails is, that helps the farmer, that pays for a farmer to keep that land organic as opposed to that land going into conventional use, which of course is gonna cause more sprays, more pesticides, more funky stuff going onto the land. And of course, that really does not disappear. That actually goes into the ground, into the water, into the drinking water. So at some point, somewhere, somebody is consuming that. So just because you can adequately wash produce is not really a substitute for that. I would say this is a this is something to say, okay, I couldn't buy organic cucumbers this week. I couldn't buy organic tomatoes this week, this month. Let me wash my produce really extra good to make sure that I am washing out any possible things. And of course, some things just aren't available organic or much, much more difficult where they only come out a couple times a year organic because of the season or whatever. So, um, so don't avoid organic because you think you have this magical, powerful uh, pesticide buster that you're gonna put onto your food. Also, reports have also shown that organic food is higher in nutrients, and this was also this article links and gives a source to that, uh, that somebody had done a research on that. Um, uh, that research is done by Charles Benbrock, a professor at Washington State University, where he conducted research on the mineral nutrient contents, and of course, it's a direct correlation that the quality of your soil that the plants are grown in, that your produce is grown in, reflects the nutritional value. So if you're putting pesticides or you're putting some kind of contaminant onto the land, of course that's gonna get into the food. But if you have soil that's super rich in nutrients, it has more of, more of this mineral, more of that mineral, the plant, again, is going to absorb that. The plants absorb what's in the soil. So the healthier the soil, the actual, the healthier your produce is going to be, the healthier that can be uh, to eat. So don't think that just washing again your veggies is the proper thing to do. That's not the case. Eat organic as much as possible. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.